Welcome back to another episode of Naperville Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Josiah Schooneman. We got another jam-packed week in prep sports as we wind down the month of April. We begin with the baseball edition of the Crosstown Classic as Naperville Central takes on Naperville North. After being swept by Neuqua Valley, Naperville Central snapped that losing streak with a 6-2 win over Naperville North. Now the squads hit the field for Game 2 of a Crosstown series in Central Territory. Huskies look to get some runs with the bases loaded in the top of the first, but Peyton Seibel crowds into Pablo Nicolutis, who makes the easy out at second to retire the side. Two on for the Hawks, and Clay Schrader gets a base hit that brings in both runners, and the Hawks lead 2-0. Now 3-0 Hawks, but North still shows an effort with Zach Bava throwing down to Tanner Malley who tags out Nate Wiley to end the inning. In the second inning, Red Hawk pitcher Luke Rue keeps the hot start going with a nice punch out on Matt Sunshine. He doesn't just throw the heat, but he can also make plays in the field by snagging the Tanner Malley liner. North's pitcher Max Steele shows off his arm by getting a strikeout on Schrader. Welcome back Colin Barzi, who's playing in his second game for his senior year. Barzi is doing Barzi things and that's hitting dingers. Goodbye baseball and that's home run number two in this series for the Vanderbilt commit. Later on in the sixth inning, Schrader continues his assault with more base hits. Two hits for Schrader that results in three batters crossing the plate and the Red Hawks take a 7-0 lead heading into the seventh. Michael Boyce steps in as the closer, and he catches the can of corn to end the ball game. Hawks take the series with a 7-0 win over the Huskies. It's a beautiful day for some baseball. Matia Valley is coming into the game after sweeping Wabonzi Valley, while Niqua Valley just swept Naperville Central. Starting in the bottom of the second with Charlie Ristoff, who hits a bouncer to Daniel Bestides, who makes a nice play to Connor Axtulowitz at first for the out. We skip to the top of the fifth with Noah Larson, who cranks a shot deep into left field for a double. Next up to bat for the Mustangs is Michael Bryant who hits a sacrifice fly to right field that brings home Larson to open the scoring for Matia. Sticking with the Matia bats in the sixth inning, Mark Golmanos hits a shot into center field allowing Jaden Malone to take home, 2-0 Matia. Batting next for Matia is Jake Levine, who hits a sacrifice fly to center, allowing Matthias Neon Kirchen to score, putting Matia up by three. Nikwa's turn at bat in the sixth as Josh Wentz leads off with a single. Mark Menneke is up for the Wildcats as he bunts. Drew Hopkins collects and throws the first, but Menneke beats the throw. Bases loaded for the blue and gold with Carson Stevens up to bat. He hits to the shortstop, setting up the Mustangs infield for a perfectly executed double play to end the inning. Leaving off the seventh inning is Michael Bryant, who drops the ball just behind second base for a single. Jaden Malone is at the plate now as he hits into the outfield allowing Bryant to dive home extending the lead to 4. Mattia not slowing down in the 7th. Jeremy Rona smashes one into right field picking up 2 RBIs and putting the Mustangs up by 6.
Things go from bad to worse for the Wildcats as a wild pitch brings Rona home, putting Mattia up by seven. Bottom of the seventh and the final chance for Niqua. Josh Wentz hits the ball into foul territory, but Noah Larson is there to make the catch. A shutout from Drew Hopkins helps Mattia Valley take down Niqua Valley by a score of 7-0. Coming up, we'll show you the DVC Championships in Badminton here on NSW. Oh no, I think I lost my debit card. Okay, don't panic. Don't panic, we're in a mall. Some stranger's probably tapping new shoes, tapping a washer-dryer combo, just tapping everything in sight. It's okay, just tap your phone. With BMO, you can use your phone to freeze and unfreeze a lost card. I can? And you can always get a new card instantly at a BMO branch. I got my tap back. You ever seen someone this excited about a debit card before? Oh, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Not this excited. When a bank gives you instant peace of mind, that's the BMO effect. He took his victims at night. They were never heard from again. We were there when true crime podcasts spiked your anxiety. Maybe try binging something less intense next time. We were there for that. And we're here for everything else. Here it's personal because we get to know you. We have our first postseason action in the spring sports season with the DVC Doubles Championships in Badminton taking place at Naperville North. Pick up your racket and let's swing our way over to the DVC Badminton Doubles Tournament at Naperville North. Six teams, including five of our area teams, are ready for strong performances with the sectionals next week. Wabonzi Valley's freshman duo of Tisha Dubé and Sam Narchetti sweep Central's Gianna Zhao and Megan Moreno in the semifinal of three doubles. To the two doubles semifinal with North Shannon Shu and Rakshita Raparo taking on DeKalb's Leah Gadel and Kathy Kamez. The Huskies had some work to do in the first set, but pull away in the end, winning 21-14. In the second set, Shu and Reparo make it look fun on their end, take their 21-10, and Shu is excited for that championship spot. We scout their opponents, and it's Arushi Chuderi and Wan Han Sun from Niqua Valley, winning their semifinal match over Riyal Awala and Devanji Kali from Matia Valley. Time for the one double semi-final between Matias Anjana Vishwanathan and Sri Batula going up against Naperville Central's Hannah Ahn and Jessica Pai. The Mustang group is wasting no time getting that birdie out of reach. Batula and Vishwanathan win the semis in straight sets 21-18 and 21-15, setting up a 1-2 seed battle for the championship. Championship time for three doubles. The Wildcat pair of Ana Wan and Anusha Thate get off on the right foot on Dubé and Narchetti. However, Dubé and Narchetti show why they're the one seed in three doubles as Tisha flings that birdie where nobody can get it. Dubé and Narchetti are your DVC three doubles champions after a two set win over Niqua's three doubles. Now to the two doubles championship with Shu and Warparo against Sun and Chuderi. Sun and Chuderi bring it on early, and a failed return on the other side helps for the point. Here we go again with them, and Sun absolutely smashes that birdie to the ground. Now Shu and Warparo turn it on. Shannon is running all over the place, wanting that point so badly, and the firepower lands in her favor. This went to two insane sets, but Shu and Raparo get it done by scores of 21-17 and 24-22 and bring home the DVC Two Doubles Championship. Last but not least, the One Doubles Championship. Hannah George and Kanyanat Vajwarat for the Wildcats go to work with the quick point on Mustangs Vishwanathan and Batula. George and Vajwarat bring out the grooves in this match winning 21-3 in both sets and they are DVC One Doubles Champions. On this play of the week, it's Jonah Frank with some filthy moves on the field. He works his way from behind the net, then pulls off a nasty spin move, then jukes his defender out of his shoes for the goal. Ooh, what a sequence that was from Frank, spinning, then stopping on a dime and dipping inside before finding the net. My goodness. In these complicated times, 
local news has never been more important. DailyHerald.com lets you stay connected to your community, wherever you are. The Naperville Police Department needs your help to solve crime and bring offenders to justice. When you submit tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers, you help keep our city one of the safest in the nation. Tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers have helped solve hundreds of crimes and recover over $7 million in drugs, property, and cash. Remember, tipsters remain anonymous and receive cash rewards up to $1,000 if their tips lead to an arrest. Call the tip line at 630-420-6006. You may have that one piece of information that solves the crime. Former Bennett Academy girls basketball guard Lene Beaumont earned a huge achievement by winning Miss Basketball of Illinois. The senior joins all the great players that have taken home the award over the years, including a familiar face in the Bennett program. I got more on the future Indiana Hoosier in this feature story, sponsored by Edward Elmhurst Health. It's just kind of a dream come true, to be honest. Seven years ago, Kathleen Doyle won Miss Basketball of Illinois after leading Bennett Academy girls basketball to back-to-back -back state titles. Now, Lene Beaumont joins her idol as the second winner of the award for the Red Wings and the third girl ever from our area schools. The senior also helped Bennett to back-to-back -back state appearances, including a runner-up finish this season while also receiving a first-team All-State selection. Back in March, she took home 2023 Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year as well. She also joins Candace Parker as the lone local athlete to win both awards. Lene got the chance to meet Kathleen at practice during the season, and after Lene won Miss Illinois Basketball, Kathleen gave her a call to congratulate her. She couldn't be more thrilled to win the prestigious award just like her idol. If little Lene like were to think like, oh yeah, your senior year, like you're gonna win Miss Basketball, she would have been like, like you're lying to me. Like she would never have believed it. To be considered along with those great names, they're all big time players, played well at the next level as well. So just like growing up watching Kathleen Doyle win it, it's just like it's awesome. Head coach Joe Kilbride was the one who broke the news to Lene when she won the award. Coach Kilbride came to my house. Um, I wasn't expecting him to be there, so we, when he rang the doorbell, I was pretty like a little confused, honestly. And then he just basically told me I won Miss Basketball, and like I had no words, I was kind of speechless. Her accomplishments are a culmination of all the hard work she has put in on the court, as well as how far she has come since being a freshman on varsity back in the fall of 2019. Not only has she made a huge impact on the hardwood, but also on her teammates and coaches. She's just such a good person. Lene's a great human being and uh, she's always been incredibly talented player but also very humble at the same time great teammate kilbride has coached both lene and kathleen and he sees similarities between the two the thing about her and kathleen both is they were always about winning. They weren't hunting points, they were never hunting stats, they were always hunting wins for the program and elevating the program. As a teammate, uh, Lene is like, the least selfish person you will ever meet. She was constantly looking for us to get the ball to, just giving up game-winning shots because she wanted her teammates to have the chance to make the shot. And that also translates to her as a person. She never puts herself first. She's always so concerned about other people and she's just always so caring. Now with her high school career coming to a close, Lene will be off to Bloomington in the fall where she will be dressed in red and white again, but this time for the Indiana Hoosiers. She is pumped to play for an elite program in the Big Ten. Can't wait to get on campus, I guess, get to work, get to work with the coaches. I've already built like pretty good relationships with most of my teammates, but get to play with them, learn how they play. I'll be on the same court as like Caitlin Clark, which is just crazy, even though I played her my freshman year to think like I'll continue to play her. I'll get to see some Bennett teammates as well in the Big Ten, so I'm pretty excited. After her icon made her mark on the program years ago, Lene Beaumont built a legendary career of her own, and her name will never be forgotten at Bennett Academy. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Josiah Shuneman. Let's get back to spring sports with some softball. We begin with Wabonzi Valley hosting the top team in the DVC, Naperville North. 
A sunny but cool afternoon matchup with Naperville North softball traveling to Obonzi Valley. The Huskies hope to remain undefeated in DVC play. In the top of the first inning, Christina Donaldson follows a Charlotte Chelich double with an RBI two-bagger of her own. Courtesy runner Sarah Rossi comes around to score as the Huskies strike first for a 1-0 lead. In the second inning, after a leadoff Eliza Patterson single, Laurel Anstein lines a ball to second. Avery Call makes a nice running grab and doubles Patterson off first with a throw to Lily Elsie to end the threat. To the top of the third inning, North leadoff hitter Olivia Hebron slaps a single back up the middle. Ellie Goff comes around to score from second base and it's 2-0 Huskies. Later in the third, Maddie Larson slaps a hard grounder to short that skips past Anna Riggs into the outfield. Hebron and Sarah Rossi come in to score to make it a 4-0 lead for the Orange and Blue. Charlotte Chelich has been cruising on the mound as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Lefty Gia Colbert smacks a single into center field to start off the frame for Wabonzi Valley. Next up is Riggs, who swats a deep fly into left that drops in for a hit. Colbert motors into third and Riggs into second for a double. Hannah Lau steps to the plate with the Warriors in need of a big hit. The junior delivers with a line drive into the gap in left center. Laub heads to second as two runs score to cut the deficit in half as it's now 4-2. Mackenzie Andrzejczak is batting next and the senior comes up with an RBI hit as well. Laub comes in from second on the single and it's a one-run game. We move to the bottom of the fifth. Shayna Woolwine now pitching for the Huskies and Anna Riggs is back at the dish. Gia Colbert on first after another single when Riggs slices a line drive into right field. The throw goes to second where Riggs gets caught off the bag, but she hustles into third base as Colbert breaks for home and everyone is safe. Wabonzi is fired up as we are all tied at four heading to the sixth inning. In the top of the sixth, the Huskies have the bases loaded with nobody out. Ellie Goff with a roller that sneaks into the outfield to score Eliza Patterson to put North back in front 5-4. After Hannah Lau gets a strikeout, Charlotte Chelich takes a pitch the other way into left to score a pair of runs as Gabby Schmiel and Giada Colvin come home. One of three doubles in the game for Chelich. Next up is Christina Donaldson who continues to crush the ball in this one as it gets to the fence in left. Two more runs come in to score as Donaldson hustles in for a triple. A big time response from Naperville North who now leads 9-4. In the seventh inning, the Huskies put the game away for good. Sophomore Maddie Larson with a sinking liner that eludes a diving Anika Wilbur. The ball rolls all the way to the fence and Larson sprints around the bases on her way to an inside the park home run. Despite a challenge from the host Warriors, Naperville North improves to 4-0 in DVC play after a 16-4 victory over Wabonzi Valley. The storms have passed and we finally get some sunlight for a softball game in the afternoon as the Naperville Central Red Hawks face the Matia Valley Mustangs. Top of the first and at bat is Shane Meach who strikes out looking. Up next is Claire Desrosiers who hits a blooper into left field. Genevieve Gonzalez comes around third and she is safe at home as Desrosiers advances to second base. Mustangs lead 1-0. Going into the third inning with the game tied at one, Charlie Banesh strikes out Sidney Hurst. At bat is Avery Hayward as she pops it up and Gonzalez dives to make a terrific catch while avoiding a collision. What a play! The Red Hawks are looking to take the lead in the fourth inning. Shea Meach hits a double that goes all the way to the wall in right field to bring home Kendall Lentz and Julia Nicholas. They take a 3-1 lead. Bottom four, Charlie Banesh rips a line drive to center field with Shelly Hess coming home to cut it to a one-run game. In the fifth inning, Meredith Can is up to bat and she crushes this ball to center. 
Courtney Fournier crosses home plate to extend the Red Hawks' lead to 4-2. Later on, Kendall Lentz grounds out at first, but Avery Hayward scores on the fielder's choice to make it 5-2. Moving ahead to the seventh, Julia Nicholas hits this ball to right that drops for a base hit. Then an error off an errant throw to third helps Meredith Can reach home plate to make it an 8-2 lead for Central. Reese Valha is up to bat as she hits this ball out to right field with Kendall Lentz making the catch. The Red Hawks start their week off with an 8-2 win over the Mustangs. After the break, we have boys and girls lacrosse here on NSW. Oh no, I think I lost my debit card. Okay, don't panic. Don't panic, we're in a mall. Some stranger's probably tapping new shoes, tapping a washer dryer combo, just tapping everything in sight. It's okay, just tap your phone. With BMO, you can use your phone to freeze and unfreeze a lost card. I can? And you can always get a new card instantly at a BMO branch. I got my tap back. You ever seen someone this excited about a debit card before? Oh yeah. Huh. Mm. Not this excited. When a bank gives you instant peace of mind, that's the BMO effect. We tell everybody's stories, stories big and small. Everybody's story matters to us, and it comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, and that's what makes it so special. We don't always need a big story. Sometimes we want a story that makes us laugh. Sometimes we want a story that we relate to. Sometimes we want to cry with that story. But more importantly, we want to hear the stories about people in the community. Last but not least, we check out lacrosse, starting with the girls as Neuqua Valley faces Naperville Central. It's a chilly night at Neuqua Valley as the Wildcats look to get a game above 500. They face Naperville Central, who is searching for its first conference win. Neuqua leads 4-1 before Eva Russell scores in the penalty restart. That cuts it to two. Zawadi Brown is always a difficult matchup for her opponents, and she shows it here as she sprints to the net for the goal. They lead 5-2. Wildcat goal number one, Zawadi Brown. Edie Keene takes the pass from her sister Molly and makes a nice move to get by her defender for another Niqua goal. That extends the lead to four. Naomi Winarski gets involved in the offense as she finds an angle and zips the ball into the back of the net. It's now 7-2. Coming up on five minutes to go in the first half, the ball is fought for, then popped into the air and Edie Keene comes up with it. She works her way towards the net, evades a defender, and puts in yet another goal for the blue and gold. Central trying to stop the bleeding as Kendall Albertini passes to Sarah Klingeman. She spins off her defender and tries to send it in, but goalie Brooke Kirchner makes a nice save. With over two minutes left in the half, the ball is loose again. Claire Heller can't pick it up and it rolls to Winarski who fires it into the net. Wildcats take a 10-2 lead into halftime. Second half is more of the same. Winarski with a spin move, loses it, gets it back, spins back the other way, and scores another goal. Neuqua Valley with a dominant 16-3 victory over Naperville Central. Wildcats move to 2-0 in the DVC and are a game above 500. We head to the Valley for some boys lacrosse as the Wildcats of Neuqua Valley face the Red Wings of Bennett Academy. Both teams come into this contest in red-hot form as the Wildcats are on a five-game winning streak while the Red Wings have won their last four. The game gets off to an electric start as Jonah Frank finds cutting Liam Gramza and he buries it as the Wildcats draw first blood. Junior midfielder Michael Frieri picks up the ball at half field, unleashing a burst of speed and a nice spin move to get the finish to tie at 1-1. <laughs> 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 
Goals continue to go back and forth between the two teams. However, Frank from behind the net pulls off a nasty spin move, then dips inside the defender to score and put the Wildcats up 4-3 after the first quarter. Nikwa with the momentum capitalizes as Kerry George bends the corner and his bounce pass finds Clark Menerick on the other end to finish, making it 5-3 early in the third quarter. The Wildcats go on to score three more goals, yet the Red Wings continue to battle, as Eric Lorenz powers past a Nikwa defender to put the ball in the net to make it 8-4. Bennett Academy does the improbable by turning the game on its head. Frieri moving full steam ahead picks out Eric Lorenz once again and he buries it. The Red Wings are now down only one with the score at 8-7 at the end of the third quarter. The Red Wings equalize through freshman midfielder Grant Randolph as he finishes right in front of the net to make the game level at 8-8. The Wildcats answer back as Frank finds Menerick cutting into the Red Wings' defense. He scores to make it 9-8 to Niqua, regaining the lead. Bennett ties the game up as Lorenz picks out Randolph, who slings his shot into the top corner. The score is now 9-9 with only minutes left in the game. The Red Wings, though, complete the comeback as Lorenz, once again in on the act, finds Thomas Tierney for the game-winning score. Nikwa Valley pulls one back, but it's not enough as Bennett Academy mount an incredible comeback, beating them 11-10. For the play of the week, Genevieve Gonzalez lays out for a pretty defensive play. Avery Hayward pops it up in the infield, and Gonzalez dives to make a terrific catch while evading a collision with her teammate. A great effort by the junior being able to hang on as she hit the grass. That's it for the show. Join us next week for more postseason coverage as boys gymnastics moves into the sectional round and we'll have the girls track and field DVC meet at Naperville Central. Don't forget, we're always online. Check us out on our website for extended highlights and stories at nctv17.org. You can also find us on social media at nctv17 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Josiah Schuneman. Thanks for watching.